there's a way to make an entrance. My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Do you have a messy basement that could be a multifunctional masterpiece? I'll show you how to make yours wow right now. Great design comes from a winning formula. Mine is as basic as a set of building blocks. Put them together, add up the results, and you've got a sensational room. Today's case study, Jennifer's chaotic and disorganized basement. My basement is a total dumping ground. It's a functional garage. I'm gonna show you how to make it a clutter-free, multifunctional space the whole family can enjoy. Wow, this is big. How many feet long is this basement? It's about 60 feet. Here's what happens in a new build house. You get down here and you think, wow, it's such a great big open space. Let's not put up any walls. And then what you end up with is the lawnmower, the laundry, the sports equipment, the media room, the toy department, and then the office. And this is when I say you got to create some definitions of space. A basement needs a good plan to address the different functional demands. You need storage. Perhaps you need folding space for the laundry. You need a place to hang out and watch TV or a movie and just lounge. If you've got kids, they need a place to play and you need a place to put all their toys. And I just want to see some walls. Absolutely. I don't think that they have to be made out of drywall. Oh, OK. I think you can make it out of cabinetry. Walls of storage. So there, there are task areas and storage areas. You got it. I think it needs some color, some brightness. I really just want it to feel like a cozy family room. To create a multi-purpose basement, you'll want to start with layout and storage. Fill it with practical furniture and comfy seating. Bring in color and texture with fabrics and a cozy carpet. Add stylish window coverings. Create a play zone for the kids and add accents to finish the space. This is gonna be a great transformation. Your basement is valuable square footage. You own it, so make the most of it. How do you feel about this tile? I'm feeling kind of neutral about it. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of beige. Yeah. Our jumping off point is fabrics that add charm and personality. Here we go. Red. <gasps> I don't red. feel neutral about red. Well, we wanted to add brightness and warmth to this basement, so I think red is the ideal color. And it's fun. Red is a design direction for this room. What I love about most of them is they've got a high contrast to them. So while the overall ground is intense red, yeah. it doesn't have that drab effect that a solid red has. You feel the lightness and the brightness, yet extremely durable, super hard wearing. Love that. Pricing, $29.99. We got a scheme. I think it looks fabulous. It'll really brighten up the basement. Now, about those walls. Remember how I said we should try dividing this room up strictly through the use of cabinetry? When I started calculating what the cost would be to create storage solutions, the nice storage costs like $500 per unit. Yeah. So we'd be looking at maybe $4,500 mm -hmm. to outfit it all. Or if we use just simple mudroom storage, it's $25. Correct. So how about we just put up a wall? I think we can do it for right around $2,000. And then just simple shelving so that all that ugly stuff, like the hockey equipment, can disappear. Building a separate storage room and using inexpensive shelving keeps everything tidy and organized. The money we save can go towards storage issues in the rest of the space. We have some site conditions, very common to a lot of basements. Mm -hmm. In some areas you have a high ceiling and in other areas you have a lower ceiling. Correct. The issue is if we had full height ceilings throughout this room, right. we could use the wardrobe systems. Correct. However, we have a lower height available to us, so there, none of the ready to go wardrobe systems are gonna work. They're too tall. Uh, yeah, too tall. So I've looked instead to kitchen cabinetry. Mm -hmm. There's a range of full height pantry cabinets. Okay. So we can just butt them up against each other. We can run three units across the back of the storage wall, which okay. I think is terrific. Then we can combine lower base cabinets and literally stack 
upper kitchen cabinets on top of them. Right, so instead of having a break of space between your lowers and your uppers like you would in a standard kitchen application, you're just gonna jam it right together and have it run floor to ceiling. What we end up getting is three banks of lower drawers. They're 24 inches deep, so that's big storage. 10 cabinets with doors, five on each side, and on the other wall, three full height pantries. Fantastic storage. And that's before I've even got to the playroom, where I'm also thinking about doing more drawers, more full height pantries. This place is gonna be so kitted out in kitchen cabinetry, but it's not gonna look like a kitchen. I'm happy with this plan. I mean, this gives us all the storage we need. By using kitchen cabinetry, you get flexible storage for about the same cost as wardrobe systems. To offset the wood, we're lightening the paint palette. In this case, it's cream. And here's a trick if you've got bulkheads. One of the best ways is to take the color that's on the wall, wrap it right up and over the bulkheads and onto the ceiling. This way, those ugly bulkheads will be minimized and almost disappear. We're turning this cluttered basement into a cozy, multifunctional family space with warm colors, organized task areas, and storage, storage, and more storage. Next, furniture and versatile seating. I found it in the garbage. Wow. We're showing you how to turn a messy, catch-all basement into a cozy, multi-use family space with show-stopping fabric, storage. This gives us all the storage we need. And a bright new coat of paint. Now, a durable and comfortable place to curl up in. So do we want a sectional? I think sectional would be an awesome idea. I mean, you get maximum seating and they provide sort of space-saving solutions, delineation of space very well. The staircase comes down in behind. Okay. And the TV's gonna be on this wall. Right. So the back of the sectional would now create almost a room divider. So You'd you have would a walk along here yeah. to get down to the rest of the space. With seating for six, we also have room for one chair and a coffee table. Generally, a minimum of 12 inches between couch and coffee table is enough room to move around it and close enough to put your feet up. I think I like the sectional. We're slip covering it in an oatmeal linen, but that leaves us with one big question. Which red fabrics do you like to go with our absolutely massive linen sectional? Doesn't get hotter than red for fabrics, right? Well, the ECAD yes. is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And what I was wondering is, if we want to use fabric to be able to close off the kids' play area, what I like about it is it allows you to close off the mess, but yeah. it adds a theatrical aspect to it. Sure. So I feel like this is where they can put on plays and come out from behind. And yeah. in thinking about that, the ECAT seems to be the right mood and the right feeling for yeah. that use. It's definitely the right energy for that kind of a zone. So for basement windows, even if the window is small, I always prefer to have full height drapes. I think that's a really good trick to make you feel as though you're in a place that has bigger windows, even though your window's tiny. I love this linen the with the kind of trellis embroidered on it. Right. Because I think it, it has texture, it has high contrast. I like how crisp it is. Mm -hmm. And this is a fabric that will make really nice drapes. It'll hang beautifully. And what do you think about paintbrush red for the chair? I'm all for a bold statement, so let's just be bold and go with the red and white painterly fabric on the chair. Okay. What chair, you might be asking? Well, this one. Wow. The price was right. I found it in the garbage. That's even better. <laughs> and I know it's hideous right now. I mean, it is filthy, it is terrible, it has this attached back cushion. This is a chair that I would not have picked up off the side of the road. Tommy thinks I'm crazy. That's just nasty. But I actually think it has an interesting line. Just nasty. The thing is, it's good and solid, right? Yeah, sounds very solid. Okay, it's got good bones, it's just wearing a really bad outfit. It needs a new outfit. You're right. We're gonna divert the attention with some snazzy fabric. What's the advantage of rescuing a chair from the garbage? Well, the reupholstery will cost you about $400 plus the cost of fabric. It'll cost me less than if I bought a similar chair of similar quality new. Plus, I get to show you that I can make over something I found in the garbage. Once you have your biggest pieces of furniture, turn your attention to coffee and side tables. What do you think of this? Well, I like those. It's a good mid-tone wood. 
Mm -hmm. It's the same color as the stair railing, the banister and the spindles. And potentially it could be a nice contrast against very contemporary, boxy furniture. $120? Well, $120 seems like a very good price point because originally I would say they would have been four or five times as much. Yeah. You've got the caned lower shelf on it, which is terrific if you want to be able to store extra toys or what have you. But it also has this nice big top surface. Absolutely. Right? You want to have enough room to put a big lamp, but you also want to have room for your popcorn bowl. You got to have your accoutrement, your Many snacks, snacks, your remotes. Lots of snacks, lots of drinks. I want options. We're also sticking to solid wood for the coffee table and entertainment unit. And look at this. Oh, much more durable. It's got a nice mid-wood tone coloration. Yeah. I think it has the right feel and the right level of informality. This is put your feet up on it kind of kickback comfort. Oh, look, there's a matching console table. I like it, but how about we don't match? Because we've already got an approach that's kind of a collection of different elements. For me, I want to see everything in the same wood tone. I am happy for nothing to actually match. Oh, hey, what do you think about this one? This is a great coffee table. It has very contemporary lines, but it's executed in a fairly rough way. So it's sophisticated, but it's casual all at once. I think it's terrific because it's compartmentalized. So you can store different elements in each of the four quadrants. This one is $449 compared to the first one, which was $649. Okay. I think this is a better looking table. You make the cut. Now for a media unit. What about this one, Sarah? Oh. I love that it's long and low, and it has a bit of a sophisticated bow front, which is nice, and it's very similar wood tones to our coffee table that we've chosen. OK, what I like about this is it's got a shelf. Yeah. So you can store DVDs, but it's nice to have enough room to put the components so that you can easily access them with your remote. Absolutely. OK, so what we've achieved here is three pieces, all from the same shop, but they look like we've shopped all over the city for them. So I think these will make a nice collection. As promised, we're delivering on storage, which also helps divide the space into various task areas. But with this much wood, it's critical to strike a balance with your fabric scheme. Okay, we gotta do this fast before the upholstery department okay. notices that we've stolen their sample. I like your little display. So, what do you think about this one? Too pink. What about going dark? Too dark. You're really having trouble making decisions today. How about this brown? Too traditional and too predictable. Kind of heavy in the basement? Yeah. Uh, something rustic, maybe in this tone, to pick up the stripe? Too country. It's not a barn. This I like. Simple, elegant, lovely. It's the right color tone, natural wood. It has kind of a, like a nice light look. It's All a mid-tone. I'm glad you finally found one you like, because otherwise I was about to have to start making up some doors. I have a very strong opinion about this. OK, I got to get this back. It's OK to mix and match different wood tones. You just need to have a bit of repetition. I'm going with two different wood tones. Light oak repeated through all of my built-ins, and then a warmer mid-tone mahogany color for the entertainment unit, the coffee table, and the console. As long as you have more than one piece each of two different wood tones, it's OK to mix and match. This multi-purpose family basement is starting to cozy up and make sense with durable storage and furniture, plus some kickback seating. Next, choosing Broadloom to add softness and pattern and the art of assembling it yourself. You know what? Unlike most couples, we don't fight while we're doing it. Today's case study is about making a catch-all basement the be-all and end-all of your home. You make the cut. It's going to be an organized, multi-purpose family space once we're done. A key ingredient is long-wearing, good-looking floor coverings. And laying carpet around installed units rather than under them allows you to replace it easily if there's ever a big stain or a basement flood. Wow! Basement floors are usually concrete and they can be cold and hard. So when choosing the carpet... Come and see these. Well, that's nice because it's got a subtle grid. Think about cut, color, and pile, but also consider using thick underpad. It will add warmth and extra cushioning when the kids get all rough and tumble. It's 100% wool, environmentally friendly, there's no off-gassing, great for the kids, and it's striped. It has texture, which is exactly what we wanted to give softness. Yeah. And guess what? It was less expensive than any of the options we considered. This has a lot more life to it. Check 
Santa cabinetry. This is insane. Yeah. Major, major storage. That's 84 cubic feet of storage. Just here. We also put in 84 cubic feet on this side, so that's 168 cubic feet of storage. There's no excuse now for a mess. Now you know what I want to see? Wow! These are designated zones now, so our storage zone is completely closed off from the rest of the space. All those stinky hockey bags? This is an invitation for messiness. I want to look at this playroom. You know what I love about the playroom? It's the fact that these cabinets allow you to stash stuff. Oh, in behind. In behind. Once our curtain goes up in front here, mm -hmm. you'll just be able to whoosh, close it off and you won't see anything. I cannot wait to get some red in here because what we've got right now, as good as this looks so far, is beige on beige. We just need a little electrifying jolt of color. That will come from the fabrics and a fun framing idea. Having your fabric scheme with you when picking the right red for picture frame mats is really essential. There are so many different shades of red, and even within our fabric scheme, we have several different shades of red. Trying to find the one that pulls it all together is really the goal here, and I think I have found it in this one, which is called Really Red. So I'm guessing Really Red is really gonna work. Back at Jennifer's, the furniture is coming in and the track lighting is going up. If you're on a budget and you need lots of lighting, you can get an eight foot long track with four heads for less than $100 a piece. That's some pretty big bang for your buck. Meanwhile, Tommy and I are diving into one of our favorite jobs. Please tell me that this is less expensive because you have to assemble it yourself because I just need some incentive here. What we're appreciating here is the fact that the arms can be put on whichever side you want, so you can right. manipulate the size of it. You can flip it around. Yeah, it's just that we always assemble it the wrong way. I know, but you know what? Unlike most couples, we don't fight while we're doing it. True that. We have fun. And what's not to love about pulling this fantastic family room together? And the bright red mats definitely set off these beautiful family pictures. We've used tall storage towers flanking either side of the play space to help differentiate it from the rest of the room. If you want to do a curtain as a room divider, the hardware you choose is very important. Start with a cup mount. If you use a cup mount on either end, it means that the drape can be drawn all the way back. And then use a center support, a ceiling mount, and make sure that it's short so it keeps the rod snug right up close to the ceiling. After all, you don't want it kind of hanging down at the top of your head. In order for this to work, it has to really look like it's dividing the rim. Best thing about this is, if the kids make a huge mess in here, that's all you have to do. And hey, it's fun for a puppet show. We're bringing comfort and organization to this multi-purpose basement with a warm color scheme, durable furniture, and storage by the ton. Next up, our curtain call. <laughs> to make your dumping ground of a basement into a multi-purpose family space, think about its layout and create spaces for every task. Brighten with warm colors and kick back furniture. We're maxing the seating. You thought this basement was a lost cause? Well, check out the end result and get ready to plan your own redo. How do you make your basement not feel like a basement? Well, treat it like a room above ground. You need drapes, you need softness, you need color, you need accessories, and you need some artwork. And that is what will really make it feel like a place for living and lounging and relaxing. It's warm, friendly, it's colorful, it's inviting. It's the best part of the house. All in all, it doesn't feel like a subterranean environment anymore. It's sophisticated enough, but it's still a very friendly place to be. This basement is a multifunctional space. It's not just about nighttime movie watching. If it were just a nighttime space, we could make it dark. But if you want to create something that's appealing through the daytime, a place where kids can go to play, why not try and make it as bright and cheery and happy as possible? Sometimes it works to open a space up and knock down the walls. In other cases, like this one, it's much better to put up a wall, help define the space, and get exactly what you need. I think it just makes so much sense for us. Certainly hockey equipment, records, kids' toys will all be put in their place because they have a place now. 
because we were able to segment it, the entire family has a place to be and a place to function. And the laundry area and the storage areas are tucked neatly away in the back so that nobody needs to look at all that stuff. And it's still a really, really attractive environment from a decorative standpoint. When selecting furnishings, avoid the use of any extraneous pieces. If you don't need it, don't buy it. A side table, a coffee table, a media unit, and a console. That's really all you need. It'll help you banish clutter once and for all. When it comes to fabrics for a kid-friendly space, choose ones with a dense pattern. If you choose a high contrast red and white, the white will give it freshness and make it pop, but the red will give it the durability and the wearability you need. The best way to make you forget that you're in a basement is to hang full-length drapes. It doesn't matter if it's just a little bit of window at the top of the ceiling. When those drapes are closed, you'll believe that you're sitting in a room above ground. Definitely the carpet was a splurge element, and necessarily so. We couldn't put something down there after going to all the trouble of inserting all of these cabinet solutions and all of this furniture and then have it underlaid with something that wasn't gonna last. Invest in a really good quality carpet and let it stand the test of time. <laughs> to be able to close those curtains on that mess that the boys can create is just hands down the smartest thing anyone could have done for us. It's just opened up our house and it almost feels like a bigger house now. We started with chaos and clutter. What we've ended up with is an inviting and exciting space for good family fun. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> Did you just break your bum? I don't know what I landed on. <laughs> you landed on something really hard? Did you really? Well, it could be my microphone pack that I landed on. <laughs> Everything oh. didn't feel good.